second district of Ilocos Norte, a famous mother of famous children. And she is also, of course, a famous daughter of a famous mother, referring to Mrs. Marcos, of course. And in her earlier years, her guest was a young mover and shaker in the world of television and cinema. Mm -hmm. The youth movement known as Kabataang Barangay and the original muse of the LGBTQ plus community. <laughs> May I present to you Senator Maria Imelda Josefa Romualdez Marcos, but we all know her as Senator, Senator Amy, Amy Marcos. Marcos. Senator, welcome to the show, Spotlight. Oh, hindi siya naririnig. Hello? Um, you need your audio? Hello? Okay. Hi, hi, hello. Hello, everyone. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Welcome. And so we were, um, earlier we were talking, we asked you a question about uh, your life in the Senate, about being a legislator. And you said, you can't remember saying that uh, you prefer to be in a legislator than a local chief executive. So tell us more about that again, please. Yeah, maybe okay lang both at the end of the day. Kasi, uh, I don't know. At that time, it was very hard to adjust to provincial life. I never lived in Ilocos. My dad was congressman when I was born. So, lagi kami nasa Maynila. Mm -hmm. Pero, ang totoo, eh, ngayon, mas enjoy ako dito sa probinsya. Kaya, oh, unang pagkakataon, oh. takbo na kami sa probinsya kaagad. Oh, oh, Ma'am, you're the chair of the Cultural Communities, ano po? Committee of, on Cultural Communities. Kumusta yes, po that's correct. Kumusta po ang ating cultural communities? What are you doing for, for, for their welfare and development? Ano po ang mga, anong programa ninyo para sa cultural communities? Well, the reality is our cultural communities are very often the poorest, the most marginal, marginalized uh, living in very remote, undeveloped areas. So talagang kulang na kulang ang tulong natin sa kanila. We have to ratchet up our help for them. Nababalitaan lang natin pag nagkakagulo sa mga issue katulad ng uh, uh, kaliwadam, for example, or yeah. yung mga uh, pinagsasara ng mga lumad schools na linusog ng NPA. Pag uh, nagkakagulo, tsaka lang natin naaalala. That's really uh, yeah. the problem. I think uh, we have to have a more thoroughgoing, a uh, better uh, plan, um, mm. cultural community strategy. Um, mm. I also think that um, it's important that we maintain the cultural uh, uh, heritage that is still more or less intact with them. Mm. Uh, dahil yun yung uh, ating tunay na pagiging Pilipino. If there is an identity crisis and we're not certain what Filipino means, um, the answer will be with the cultural communities. I agree. No? Kasi yeah, nga, yeah. very ano, unclear yeah. sa iba. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, eh, uh, dito sa Norte kasi, sasabi, uh, in fact, yung pinakamaraming cultural community sa Mindanao, ano? sila talaga yeah. ang nagba, na, na mga mayagpag. The, the Lumads, for example, and all the various tribes who are um, all over Mindanao. And uh, I believe that uh, in the Cordillera also, here in Northern Luzon, we have the next most number. Uh, marami rin sila and yeah. uh, they're, they were largely uh, unfazed or untouched by the uh, by the uh, imperial power. So uh, it's very, very interesting to see how they evolved. Kaya nga lang, um, right now, for example, there's a looming water uh, shortage. Uh, despite the fact mm -hmm. na ulan ng ulan, eh, may water shortage kasi yung anggap problematic. Yeah. Kulang na kulang daw, ilang metro na naman ang shortage. So balit, um, ang sabi nila, ang tanging solusyon ay kaliwa. Kaliwa dam na parang panatatay ko, naririnig ko oh, na yun. Oh. Parang wala nang katapusan yan eh. Uh, but now, um, there's an issue with the Dumagats living in Rizal, in Quezon Province. And sana naman, maayos din natin ang lahat na yan. Oh, para magkaroon ng additional supply sa Metro Manila. But at the same time, 
that our um, IPs get their fair share mm -hmm. of development, of progress, and the rights to their ancestral domain. Yeah. Okay. Have they been getting enough uh, protection this pandemic, do you think? No, they're, they're always the most vulnerable group. Unang -una, hindi naman sila naaabutan. Mm. At the same time, baka naman they're the luckiest group kasi hindi oh, naman oh. sila makikipagsaksiksikan dito sa syudad. Nasa puntok ng puntok. <laughs> eh, kung see. physical isolation lang ang pinag-uusapan, eh di the best. ayos na ayos sila kasi layo talaga. Hindi mo talaga <laughs> maabot. Senator, um, uh, kanina you were saying that you... Uh, where you were hiding in Ilocos Norte when when the pandemic hit. So um, let's go back. I want to sana talk about a little bit about your time as governor of Ilocos Norte. Uh, what what do you think were your greatest contributions at that time when you were the leader? Ah, in Ilocos. Yes. Well, of course, I'm proudest of the fact that we brought the poverty level down, mm. way down, and. Uh, we managed to bring it to single digit and less, uh, much lower unemployment and underemployment. Mm -hmm. So there was a level of uh, luck, obviously, um, involved. We had all sorts of programs. I was hoping that uh, the BPOs, the call centers, would come. And the kataon may fall out pa rin yung US 2008 uh, subprime crisis. So uh, as a result, they were very hesitant to expand. But I got really lucky. Yung aming uh, alachamba na buko-buko na tourism effort. Nung pumunta si na Jojo at uh, yung iba pang mga writers. Mm -hmm. Yung tourism effort namin na paway kumakaway, pumatok naman kagad. So uh, we were very surprised, actually, a little bit unprepared for the crowds that suddenly came to Ilocos Norte oh, oh, virtually oh. overnight. Oh, oh yeah, That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. We yeah. only kami, nakachamba yun, eh, jackpot talaga yun. At uh, yung tourism namin, uh, mm. since we don't really have very many large resorts, mm. five-star hotels, mm -hmm. all this uh, big-time infrastructure, um, it's a very grassroots sort of tourism and um, uh, has begun to, uh, exactly. had begun to benefit everyone from uh, the bottom up. Know. So, nakakatuwa naman kasi... Pati yung mga barangay, uh, nagbibigay sila ng, uh, nagpapaupa sila ng mga kwarto sa tabi ng uh, dagat. Mm. Tapos may glamping pa kami sa wow. ng puto, <laughs> wow. sa uh, dam. Eh, wala naman talagang ka-hotel-hotel dito, kulang na kulang. <laughs> Maganda yung glamping. Pero mabuti na eh, swak sa uso ng millennial. Yeah, yeah. Kasi yeah. naman ako ko na kesa sa akin na malaman itong mga lugar na to. Mm. At uh, kayang-kaya ng kartawan nila kahit walang mga banyo, walang <laughs> maayos na kwarto, okay lang. Oh. Okay lang. Yeah, we got really lucky. I I, I was completely surprised. And uh, the Ilocanos were uh, quite a reserve and... Uh, were quite uh, reserved and perhaps um, apparently unwelcoming. Uh, in <laughs> fact, changed their minds about tourism and uh, were very yeah. happy to show off the province. We're very proud of being Ilocano. Yeah. And uh, as a result, uh, um, they uh, were perfectly happy to show off the province. And we were so surprised the things that we take for granted, all the greenery, mm. a lot of trees, mountains that are uh, still intact, and uh, I love the uh, beaches, the waterfalls, the caves yeah. that um, we thought were just a, an ordinary weekend excursion. Mm -hmm. A big deal pala sa mga taga Manila. Ah, so, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Something new. Also. <laughs> oh. Governor, I, Senator, <laughs> Senator, can we go back to to the time that your father was president? At that time, kayo ang rebelde daw, sabi nila. And you even said that Malacanang was a snake pit. Ano ho? If, if you were to go back in time, what would you advise your father? What, would, what should he have continued and what should he have not done? What would you have told him? I don't know. It's a long, long time ago. What yeah. should I tell him? I mean, um, very hard to uh, remember. I don't know. I think... Um, I would have told him not to get sick, firstly. Yeah. Because uh, yes. uh, things were very, very centralized in his person. And when he fell ill, it uh, oh. was very, very difficult to carry on. Um, oh. I think the issue of presidential health has uh, 
become central to so much of the uh, um, so much of the speculation and intrigue lately. Oh, uh, okay. How sick is President Duterte? Yeah, and well, I wish they stop seriously. Yeah. Uh, but um, things have changed, and uh, as we saw with the uh, Prime Minister of uh, Japan, he came uh, forward and said that he was too sick to govern, like, particularly yes. during a crisis. And I think things have changed indeed, that uh, people in fact want more transparency and accountability. And uh, it's important uh, that uh, we see this um, and leaders are aware of this. I think um, all this talk of revolutionary government and so on, <laughs> swirling around the issues about the president's health, when we see him all the time, nagbumura pa rin, ewan ko ba, naman gusto nila mangyari talaga. Yeah. A senator, uh, it was your father who started the diplomatic relations with with China. Ano po? Nagumpisa yung ating good relations. Yeah, with with China. Mm -hmm. What can you say about Philippine-China relations today? Ano po ang stand niyo considering the the issues? Yes, although my father started in the seventies, the reality is. Um, that uh, China today is nothing like China was in 1973. It's a uh, completely different country. It's no doubt one of the superpowers, if not the number one superpower. I think post-COVID, there's going to be a, uh, a new balance of power. I mean, clearly, China's recovered. It's actually posting... Um, positive growth, whereas in the United States, there's the uh, tragedy of uh, uh, deaths, of continuous infection, of uncontrolled uh, um, the uh, COVID um, uh, transmission. So um, I, I suspect that China will become a, uh, a um, real contender as it is today, yeah. it'll be the number one contender even sooner than it was expected. Um, I believe in President Duterte's independent Philippine policy, and I think it's absolutely uh, right that uh, we should be friends with everyone. Yeah. We should not side with the U.S. versus China or otherwise. Kapag nag ang uh, malalaking superpowers, it's best that uh, we we step aside or get out of the way, or certainly some find a modus vivendi with both. Yeah. Hindi naman natin ugali makipag-away, makipagbasag ulo, yeah. miski kanino, yeah. and remain friends and uh, close allies, especially with those in uh, ASEAN, in the ASEAN region. Uh, Southeast Asia has become a genuine powerhouse in economics and thus in politics. And uh, as a result, we will take strength from uh, the ASEAN numbers. Ako naman, my question, Senator, has to do with uh, your own accomplishments as a presidential daughter before. Yeah. Um, three things come to mind, kasi the, the entertainment factor, diba? there was the Called, uh, no, the experimental. Shows, yeah, experiment, experimental cinema of the Philippines. And then there was the you know, television shows. And then there was Kabataan Baragay. Yeah. So we noticed that it was all geared toward the the young. So uh, what made you come up with those projects at that time? And are they still a uh, big uh, concern for you today? Well, yeah. I think firstly... I was really young at that point in time. I was really young. So uh, um, by the time I left for the U.S., I was 19 years old. So it was really, uh, I was really a kid. And uh, I was looking for a company, I guess, for other Filipino uh, uh, youth leaders and uh, village heads and uh, all, all these friends that became my close associates. Until today, many of them are still, uh, are still barcada, no? They're still katrompa hanggang ngayon. And um, I see them. It was fun, actually. Last year, when I was campaigning for the Senate, they saw so many of the Kabataan Barangay. Many of them are governors, mayors, um, congressmen. Uh, they're all over the place. Some of them are not in the elected side, but in uh, in government positions. So it's mm -hmm. fun. It's fun to see all my old friends again. Yeah. And um, I think that... Um, 
the compelling uh, factor uh, regarding communication was really how to get across to young people. Yeah. Today, yeah. that remains the challenge for government, and uh, there is uh, there are mixed reviews on the exploitation of social media by all sides of the political fence. But um, the truth is, we really need to communicate, and certainly the millennials are the best informed generation yeah. we've ever seen. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Senator, pag-usapan natin yung you're being a daughter of Mrs. Marcos. So how was it like being a daughter of, of, of a fabulous woman? And on the other hand, how are you as a mother today to, to these kids, to, to Borgi and Kaya ba? Yeah, um, my... my uh... You, you asked the question earlier about the creatives, no? the uh, experimental cinema of the Philippines. The artistic creative side is very much my mother's side. Mm. It's, uh, herit it's her heritage from uh, the Romualda mm. side. Her um, uncle was the Supreme Court Justice, but closer to his heart. He was a musicologist yeah. and he did all the collections for mm. uh, um the original Filipino folk songs from all the um, yeah, yeah. For all, from all the provinces and regions. So yeah. um, they like to do that. Everyone's a musician, more or less, in the Romualda side of the family. <laughs> On the other hand, my father um, always had tremendous respect for the power of film. Um, oh. He got into a very uh, unusual uh, uh, controversy during his run for the presidency the first time. And what happened was oh, yes. someone who oh, pictures oh. Doc Perez determined to make a biography, a biographical film of him, of his life, which no doubt is very interesting because he got uh, charged for murder, he was jailed, he topped the bar while he was in jail, he then went to war, uh, disappeared for many years, became um, resurfaced in the death march, uh, was the most uh, decorated Filipino soldier under the U.S. and then entered politics and on and on and on. No? So um, Doc Perez, having a very cinematic mind, said that why don't we just make a film? And my dad, not thinking too hard about it, <laughs> said, yeah, whatever, let's do it. And um, uh, because the old man was so nice. So not thinking so hard, my dad didn't realize that it would become such a huge issue uh, in the presidential campaign. And uh, the administration at that time of uh, President Pagapagal uh, slapped the court case and derived the TRO. So nung pagbukas ng sine on premiere night, hindi <laughs> hindi mapalabas. Yeah. So, alam mo naman Pilipino, talagang pasaway tayo sa ganyan. Kapag All the more. Kapag uh, may pinagbawalan, eh, di siyempre lahat pagsiksikan, kailangan <laughs> yung sine. And uh, the rest is history. My father won. Yeah. Um, uh, he, th he thought that the big part of it was the telling of his story through film. And uh, as a result, he always felt that Filipino movies were an un, uh, un, uh, undervalued asset of mm. ours because Filipinos are great storytellers yeah. and have yeah. um, really unique and compelling stories to tell the world. So mm. uh, um, there was also the very real economic impact of the film industry at that point. Mm. We were the third largest producer of movies at that time. So um, after, I think it was India and uh, Russia, the U.S., eh, Philippines na yung pinakamarami. So it was a real uh, major industry. We also had quite a bit of the uh, uh, outsourcing from L.A. and Hollywood because uh, music scoring and uh, uh, other films were being shot here, as you know. So malaking uh, bagay yung film industry at that time. And the uh, film is, uh, is just like tourism, has a huge multiplier effect. Mm -hmm. And jobs cascade from uh, the direct hires all the way down to the suppliers, the contractors, the wardrobe mistresses, the session musicians, yeah. the yeah. sound stages, um, filmmakers, the crew. So many people are involved in the making mm. of uh, film. Yeah, but that has been so affected this pandemic now that they can't yeah. shoot yeah. as they did before. Yeah. Uh, which brings me to the next question, Senator. How have you been coping in this pandemic? 
Uh, actually, I feel a little bit guilty because I suddenly no, see, see my children. Ako. Ask the question mm. oh, uh, oh. earlier about my children. Ayan, ayan, ayan. I think I mean, I'm going to it. It's so difficult, you know. Borg is oh, very busy. Pala. I have a son, the second son who's married to Kara Manglapus, is attorney Michael, and he's always working overtime and uh, at very strange hours because he works for a uh, an American firm. And then uh, there's my son who's out in Ilocos while I'm in the Senate in Manila. So, halos hindi kami nakikita-kita. Eh, biglang nagka-pandemic, lahat nag-landing dito sa Ilocos, uh, <laughs> sa nervous namin, uh, nagsiuwian. So, it's a nice reunion. We haven't spent this much time in many, many years. And uh, um, it's only really now that everyone's going back to uh, where they work yeah. and going back to Manila. So, um uh, it's been a good time in that sense, although um, very, very difficult for us as well as for others. I can't see my mom, so mm. that's a real problem. Bong Bong got sick. We couldn't visit him. Uh, that's also huge. And uh, one of the nephews passed away. It's, uh, oh. it's been tough and you cannot oh. visit. No? Oh. Yeah. Senator, how are you with the LGBTQ plus community well, actually, today actually just the other day we were talking about the soji bill with uh, geraldine yeah. uh, congresswoman um geraldine from uh, bataan no um we uh, we were we were talking about our frustrations with the soji bill and uh uh risa Ontiveros has been fighting it out mm. in the senate for so long Don't geraldine know. has gotten so yes, much huh? black uh okay. in uh, congress it's been really hard at the same time um also in the cultural communities um for some reason it ended up with me there's a universal equal opportunity non-discrimination bill um that's pending in the community uh, in the cultural communities kasi kasama doon kanyan eh uh, shotgun yun eh everybody's included women aged um, uh, tribes and IPs and the cultural communities, LGBTQ+, and so on and so forth. Lahat sa mutsari nasa isang bill. So that's pending with me in uh, the uh, cultural communities. And that's perceived to be the compromise position. Kapag hindi nakalusot at maraming uh, objection masyado sa LGBTQ anti-discrimination, mm -hmm. eh, parang yun ang fallback. It's oh, not the ideal uh, situation, but sabi na lang natin na step by step ito uh, on a long road. Mm. First step. <laughs> you know, Jojo, I feel like I can throw questions at Senator and she can answer me with all. This. Yeah, with, <laughs> with <laughs> all. Of, yeah. Oh, you're you. We uh, we really admire the way your mind works. Yeah. And brilliant. Brilliant. And, <laughs> so na isip namin, like, what have you been reading over this pandemic? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, uh, over this pandemic. Um, well, on one side, kasi I am the head of economic affairs, and I don't think economics Ooh. is my strong suit. Uh, but I think the Senate President, I will thank him forever, because Senate President Soto assigned me to economic affairs. Which I didn't really think I was qualified for. Pero ang maganda don is kicking me out of my comfort zone and compelling me to read economic <laughs> all over again. Uh -oh. So magkuti naman yon, kasi yung mga memorize mo na kung napunta ko sa sabi natin yung sakit ng gulo rito sa Ilocos agriculture. Alam ko na yun eh. Uh, yeah. Yung mga uh, maraming problema ron pero kahit pa paano nakakapamo. Eh, itong economics, talagang sa, sakit sa ulo. And uh, particularly today, because we are confronted with the pandemic yeah. fallout, uh, I'm reading all these dreadful recession literature oh. Oh, oh. from Stiglitz and Paul Krugman, Ben Bernanke. Biglang review. Um, funnily enough, Ben Bernanke was my teacher in Princeton. So, oh. uh, Bingin-bingi na ako doon sa mga depression, recession, economics. Parang, uh, so that's on one side. Pero pag masyado na akong nalulungkot, mm -hmm. eh, yung mga biography. Ayan. Lahat ng biography. Oh. Naka-biography festival naman ako ngayon. <laughs> so kung ano-anong binabasa kong biography, tawan-tawa ako sa mga iba. Some are really funny. Um, there are uh, there are radio commentators, humor ones, of course, 
yung uh, Steve Martin nakakatuwa then yung mga Steve oh, oh. mga Stephen King yung on writing maganda yun so oh, yeah. that's very good then one. yung um, may mga bago rin marami rin bago syempre yung uh, Michelle yung Becoming pero pinaka favorite ko yung mga nadi-discover ko na luma pero okay yeah. uh, at saka re-reading some yung Che Guevara all over again oh. maganda yun at yung mga Malcolm X kasi syempre na uso oh. na naman yung Black Lives Matter at uh, nabasa ko pa yun eh, college yata. <laughs> Tagal na. <laughs> so, uh, it's really precious. On that happy note. That, uh, on that happy note, we... Yes, on that uh, happy note, we'd like to ask one more question. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so, when you read and you relax at home, what do you like to wear or to surround yourself with? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, I'm here in Ilocos. Wala na akong damit dito eh. Lahat ng pang, pang senate ko wala. Kaya kung ano-ano, uh, sabi nga nila, yeah. may, uh, may new normal, meron new formal. So basta, basta disente yung itaas mo, ayos na. Tapos naka-shorts, naka-pangbahay, <laughs> na, mga, mga kung ano-anong uh, pantalon at sinelas. Uh, But now it's beginning to rain. Hindi na pwede yung yeah. yung duster at shorts at maginaw na eh. Lamig eh. <laughs> Senator, who made your dress? Ang ganda. Yung ako, ewan ko. Uh, uh, I think isang isang kalahating mga ukay-ukay dito sa ilo. <laughs> uh, yung damit ko ngayon karamihan na pang, pang formal. Eh nasa Maynila. So yung mga leftover na pang governor. Eh tumataba ako rito eh. So uh, hindi na nagkakasya yung, yung iba. Uh, kung ano-ano na lang. Yung mga inabel. Walang kamatayang inabel ng ilobos. Ang ganda nun. Yeah. Yeah. Oo, maswerte kami. Ang dami namin tele eh. <laughs> So, uh, problema yung tela. Um, Jojo, I regret to say, <laughs> and Senator, um, we wish we had a lot more time to ask you questions because we'd really like to know more about what right. you think about so many issues in the Philippines today. But yes, please, I uh, actually wanted to make a pitch for something. No, please, okay. please, please, uh, Senator. Just, um, well, there's uh, so many things to talk about, like you said, but yung pinaka urgent because we've just passed the Bayanihan 2 bill. Uh, unang una, managing expectations. I think uh, Jack Ma is spot on. Survival during this year uh, means you're doing great. So, wag yeah. natin asahan na yung economic uh, stimulus o recovery mm-hmm. ang magagawa ng ating mga batas. Kasi kulang na kulang talaga yung pera. Kaya ta, yung 140 billion na pinasa sa Bayanihan 2, eh talagang pahirapan. After which, pera na naman ang pag-uusapan dahil uh, papasok na naman tayo sa budget season. Mm-hmm. Yung national budget ng 2021. Ako, naubos kasi yung 2020 sa COVID. Yeah. So my deepest concern right now is how to come up with a national jobs policy. Takot na takot ako mm. sa mga na, nawala ng trabaho. Kasi kahit yung hindi mahirap dati, eh, hirap na hirap na ngayon. Yeah. Dahil uh, nawala nga ng trabaho. And uh, I know among the creative and art sector that's been intense, Ganon din sa ating uh, tourism mm-hmm. and uh, it's been really bad. Uh, hindi ko hindi ko natitiis yung uh, ating mga tricycle and jeepney driver na nagmamalimos na lang sa kalsada. Mm-hmm. So I'm hopeful that we'll have a jobs policy very soon. I'm uh, hoping that government becomes more activist and uh, intervenes in the most direct possible manner by becoming uh, the employer, direct employer. Kasi uh, yun nga, sa kakaaraw nitong mga depressing economics, eh, nakita natin in the 1930s during the Great Depression in the U.S., President Roosevelt uh, started his work brigades that uh, built the infrastructure in the U.S. that until today is useful and even hired creatives and writers like uh, Sol Dello and Richard Wright to write uh, travelogues and brochures so that they would be employed. I'm thinking that we should do the same thing. We have some yeah. kind of experience in that. Mm. Uh, yeah. I don't know yung mga gurang na kami, baka hindi na nalalaman ng mga bagets. Pero si Georgia baka naalala pa yung Metro 8. Ay, uh, of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> eh, mga ginang ng tangtahanan na pinayon ng nanay ko na maglinis yeah. sa Metro Manila. Yeah. So, 
para hindi naman zero yung income ng pamilya. And ang sipag-sipag nila na pati yung flooding sa Metro Manila na bawasan kasi at last yung mga Malinis. kanan, eh, nalinisan. So it's something like that, uh, direct employment at the same time, yun rin ang ginagawa ng tatay ko nun, binibigay yung mga uh, unsettled, uncultivated areas in uh, Palawan, Nara Palawan, for example, yeah. or in Cotabato and in Davao, and they finally got settled. So I think there are uh, efforts like that through the, Bal the Balik Provincia, efforts also in the cash for work of uh, DSWD to pad under Dole. So now we put all these initiatives together and create a uh, more coherent, um, expansive, and strategic jobs policy. Tropa, trabaho Tropa. sa oras ng pandemya. Okay. Nice. Kung so, na to, dahil uh, ang taong guto ay walang sinasanto. Tama. So, so let's... yes, on that hopeful note, I, I, I just yeah. want to say that I think we're very lucky to have uh, somebody who's thinking of all these concerns for our job. I need solution. Lahat yes, yung solution. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, Senator, thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us today. Uh -huh. And uh, we'd like to... Say thank you also to thank all our viewers po. on Spotlight. Again, this has been Dina Ventura. This is Jojo Silvestre. And this has been Spotlight. Good afternoon.